Hi, and welcome to the tutorial on uh, track LOD tree containers. So this is uh, LOD for your spline assets. First, we'll start off with showing you uh, a bit of the wiki page and explaining it. Um, we'll probably go through little bits at a time and show you examples so it doesn't get a bit too boring looking at text all the time. Uh, and the examples today we're using is uh, some track, some procedural track today and a river spline for the seasonal aspect of it. So let's get started. What you'll uh, need to do with any spline is to have a track LOD tree container and inside this container to make your LODs you will need uh, a bunch of options or some are optional, some are required. Uh, so before I run through all this, instead of going step by step to explain each of these, even though you actually can read it in the wiki, uh, we'll start to get into some of these examples. And I'm going to actually go from an example that I have with a track, which uh, is this one here. So normal, normal asset. Uh, this is a bit of an advanced tutorial, so if you're new to trains, you probably... Uh, want to find out a bit more about other things before you jump into this tutorial. So with uh, with this asset, uh, you declare obviously all the tags needed uh, to make it uh, a track and a kind, the, the correct kind it is and whatnot. But what we're interested in is uh, this container right here, which is your track lod tree. And it's found in the track container. So if we jump back out, uh, this allows you or shows you all the options that you've got with your track lod tree and then it gives you some examples down here. So hopefully I'm going to make these examples uh, a little bit more clearer as I explain what needs to be done. <coughs> okay, so in here we've got our start of our container, track, and there's this mesh length of some size and in this particular instance we've used 20 meters. That's because in this example, if we jump back up to our mesh table where all our meshes are declared, we will use these names in the track lead, tree lod below. We have uh, a track lod zero, which is really, this is the ballast. Uh, we have track lod one, two, and three. So all these are the same, uh, not the same uh, mesh, but they're the same asset that we're gonna be switching between the lods. So probably should have named it ballast, but uh, we'll name it, it's track now, so that's what it is. So track comes in lot one, 0, 1, 2, and 3, and I'll explain those a little bit more in, in more detail. They're the ones that we're going to be focusing on today. So you can see that each of those throughout our track lot tree have been used. So we've got track one, uh, lot 0 down here, 1, 2, and 3. So at, at different times uh, when your camera's oh, uh, at certain distances away from the track in trains, it's going to turn on this one and turn off all the others or turn on LOD 1 and turn off all the others. So this is where your track LOD tree, how you define it, will give you the visual effect that you want in trains. So if we start off with uh, mesh length, it's, it's always the largest mesh length you have. Now, let's stop there for a second and jump into 3D Max where our asset is and we'll tell you uh, why that is, why we use LOD3 or the largest uh, mesh in itself. Okay, so jumping back, uh, jumping into 3D Max, we have our uh, ballast here, there's LOD3, uh, LOD2 is a little bit smaller, LOD1 is smaller again, and LOD0 is the same size, except there's more polygons. Uh, as you can see when I show you in a sec. Okay, so we we see that LOD3 is the largest, and LOD3 is actually uh, 20 meters in length. So if we just do a rough calculation there, yep, 20 meters. So our LOD3 is 20 meters, and that's our largest LOD, as you can see. And we put that as 20 meters. So that's the one we're going to be working with, because that's the largest length of mesh that we have. Then as we work our way down, uh, we're going to get into the track LOD tree right now, and it says uh, subdivisions 1. 
and at the very um, top of the tree, we're saying we only want uh, we only want to divide twenty by one, which gives us twenty meters. Okay, so it's saying uh, a subdivision of one. So we're now stating that we're using the whole twenty meters, and at a log distance of eight hundred meters away from the camera, if the LOD distance is smaller than 800, drop into this high container. If the LOD distance is greater than 800, drop into this low container, low detail container. And it's pretty simple now if you look at it, that it says LOD distance is greater than 800, go to the low detail container and show track three. So from 800 meters, and beyond we're using the lowest LOD and that LOD is divided by one on the on the mesh length size so we're saying LOD 3 is actually 20 meters because we're going subdivisions are only one so it's 20 meters so 20 divided by one is 20 and that's what we have okay so I hope that hasn't confused anyone now because if you're confused now uh, you're gonna get more confused so that is 20 meters. We've declared that and we've made our tree start uh, coming down the tree to 800 meters. Anything that's beyond 800 meters use our low detail of LOD3. Now anything before 800 meters or before use the high detail and we jump into it again. We jump um, down the tree and it says okay now subdivide our uh, 20 meters because at this point it's 20 meters subdivided by 2 which means 20 divided by 2 is 10 meters so if you look at our next LOD that we're going to use which is LOD 2 you'll find that it is in fact 10 meters okay there you go so LOD 2 uh, after we say the next LOD distance we're looking at is 400 meters and if it's 400 meters or less use another high detailed uh, container uh, did I miss oh there it is sorry there's the closing tag so it's not very set out very well is it uh, use that container if it's 400 or less otherwise use our low detail mesh of LOD 2 and this is LOD 2 it's 10 meters so I'm saying subdivide this 20 meters because it, it takes it at each step it doesn't take the top here remember once it changes to 20 meters now it's going to change to 10 meters here and then we'll be working with 10 meters when we go to the next step so 20 meters it is here we divide by 2 which gives us 10 and it says if the LOD distance is greater than 400 drop down it and use mesh track LOD 2 which is now going to show us this which is uh, giving us 10 meters so th this is we're shortening it so it allows for when the splines are created uh, as you get closer to the camera it can uh, make them less harsh because the longer the actual uh, mesh the more jagged lines you're going to see the smaller it gets the nicer curve you're going to get so we've, we've halved that um, even though it gives you the same amount of polys uh, but it will give it will generate more polys because it's going to be putting more meshes down or mesh segment segments so then we go, right, LOD distance 400 is actually, it's 400 or less. We jump into our high detail container and it says, again, subdivide 10 by 2, which now gives us 5. So uh, when we're going LOD distance is greater than 100, use our low detail mesh of track LOD 1 and it's now using 5 meters for both these meshes. And if we jump back into max, we turn off LOD 2, we load up LOD 1, and you'll see that LOD 1 is in fact 5 meters. Okay? So now that uh, that 5 meter mesh uh, has not, a, not the best uh, polys, but anyway, uh, triangles together, I mean. So this is now gone. We're going to use a five. Uh, we're going to use the ten meters that was here divided by two gives us five. So now we're at the subdivision of five meters per mesh. And if the LOD distance is greater than one hundred, we use track LOD one, which is this one. But if the camera is uh, closer, a uh, one hundred or, or less to the object, 
in distance wise, we'll use the high detail container, which is LOD0. You'll see when I switch this off, it's the same size, it just has more polygons in it. Okay, so that's where you'll see, uh, that's how you'll be using your um, track LOD tree in any spline uh, container. So for instance, this is the track container. Your end caps also have a track LOD tree. So wherever you use a track LOD tree, this methodology that I'm showing you applies. So it's not just for the track container, it's for your track LOD tree container. So that's this, uh, one of the simplest forms of um, dividing up your meshes uh, based on the sizes and also using the LOD distances to determine whether you're going to go the high uh, detail container or the low detail container and so on and so forth. So uh, these high and low detail containers are used throughout lots of things. Um, in this instance, it's uh, showing which meshes to use at certain distances and at what sizes. So to have a little, little bit of a look at that in game, uh, we'll load up the game. And we will place down some track, which is this one. And you'll see how close you are. You're probably not going to be able to see it very well. But you can see there's a tiny little bit of LOD just there that kind of keeps fading out. I don't know whether you can see that very well, but that's the next transition. So, well, it's probably the LOD 2 transition. LOD one, because we're nice up, up nice and close. Uh, the ballast is uh, five meters apart using the highest LOD, but as we kind of go back, somewhere around 45 meters, uh, that sh should be roughly about 45 meters. Um, you'll, you can't notice it because it's LODed very well, but the next LOD, which is, uh, sorry, not 45 meters, 100 meters, uh, this next LOD will kick in for LOD one, around 100 meters. And then as we zoom back again, you'll see that the next LOD kicks in at LOD 2. Now I'm going to just suspend um, the stitching so that we can actually see this. So now we move in and you can see uh, that sorry, maybe it's the uh, suspend loading meshes. Um, I guess it's still hard to see. Oh, there we go. So you can see that, uh, well, at least the LOD's working on the, the sleeper spline. Fortunately, it's really hard to see the ballast change because it's actually LODed quite well. Uh, what's another way we can do this? Let's try... Get out of this one. And we will load up our procedural track. This will give us a better idea. trains. Take those cords. We're just going to preview it in the asset preview window. There we go. So this is uh, LOD, LOD 0. If we scroll back, you may see something change. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see. Okay, so the LOD 0 is there. Then we'll change at 100 meters to LOD 1. So you've seen that change. LOD 0 to LOD 1. And because there's a certain distance away from the camera, you don't actually see that change. And then we go from LOD uh, 1, which was from that one to that one, then at 400 meters. So if we go to 500 meters, you see it changes to uh, LOD 2 which is the 10 meter. And then if we go to a thousand meters, which is past the 800 meter mark, it'll go to LOD three. And it's it's only gonna squish it up into this um, preview window section here, but in, ga in the game it would stretch it appropriately. And then that's that becomes uh, LOD three. So you can see that your LOD's actually working. And obviously it's best to do it in game. So you can actually determine um, the correct outcome. But, uh, yeah, that's that's a good way of testing your LOD tree works. So that's the that's the um, the gist of it, or the basics of using the track LOD tree. Uh, another 
another few things on the wiki, which I'll show you now. And we'll run through uh, some of these things, and then I'll show you a seasonal uh, example so that you can hopefully get an idea of how to lay out your seasons in your track lot tree. So subdivisions we explained, they're just dividing between the different lengths of your your LODs or your meshes. Uh, LOD distance is how far away the uh, camera is away from your asset and then you determine whether you go high or low. We've explained that as well. Uh, LOD length is, uh, this is a bit of a, um, be careful with this one. It's a bit of a, it's not a tricky one, but it can, as it says, this tag should be used with extreme caution since it has the potential to ruin the LOD scheme and thus kill performance. Because what you are actually doing is saying, right, a LOD length of two, so at two meters of, um, at two meters of length, you're actually forcing the high detailed path. So it says the LOD length tag provides a mechanism for forcing the high detail path for short parts. Even when the low de detail path would be appropriately given the distance, specifically if the generated, uh, the generated geometry would be shorter than the LOD length setting the high detail path is chosen. So if even if the low detail path is appropriate to fit in uh, less than two meters, because you've told it load length of two, use the high detailed um, container, it's going to just use it all the time. It'll never, it'll never go to the low detail. So yes, you can kill performance with this. Sometimes you actually might want that uh, in terms of visuals, not killing performance. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you know, there's examples, um, especially in procedural track, where there's short short bits of track that you'll want to have single single sleepers instead of trying to squish uh, f a big uh, a low lot of sleepers in there. But if you if you're not sure how to use it, best not to use it because you'll uh, you'll hurt your performance if you use it wrong. Again, this one's a bit of a complicated one as well. Um, lot tessellation length. Uh, have a read of that. If people really require me to explain it further, I will, but I don't want to go into detail um, any more than what it mentions on the wiki here because it's a bit more complicated than uh, I really want to explain in this video right now. But again, if you want it explained, please let us know. Uh, LOD random bias. This is a good one. Uh, LOD random bias isn't really a LOD scheme, but instead allows you for random sections between the high and low detail paths. At the default settings of zero, this has no effect. Uh, as the number is raised towards one, the chance of forcing the high detail path is increased. So at one or higher, the high detail path would always be chosen. Uh, and then obviously zero, the low detail path would be chosen. While this tag can be used in tandem with other LOD dash tags, the behavior is somewhat arbitrary so that this isn't recommended. Uh, they're saying you should probably use it on its own, but it's, it, it, uh, it can be used with the others. A value of 0 0.5 gives a 50% variation between high and low. So, uh, what, what example could I... Oh, let's take... Let's uh, envision LOD random bias was here in the LOD distance, and we had a, a value of 0 0.5. It would then say, it, when it started loading the tree, it would go uh, randomness of 50%, I would either use this mesh or this mesh. So, and then you can start putting more high and low detailed containers inside these ones, but that just allows you to split your um, mesh or your, your visible mesh into different meshes. So that you might want a bit of variation between uh, placing down your splines, which is, it's a really cool way of doing things. So that, that actually works. Again, if if I'm not clear on how I'm explaining this, please let us know in the comments and I'll explain that further with an example. But it's fairly straightforward. Uh, the same goes for LODIS Surveyor. So you can split your um, high and lo low detail containers uh, into Surveyor only visible uh, objects and Driver only visible objects, so which is edit mode and gameplay. Uh, sometimes you might want to show certain things in Surveyor that you don't want them to show in, in Driver for your splines, and you can do it that way. Uh, the LOD Season Index, uh, I'm about to show you an example of that. That's to provide seasonal support for your LOD assets. So I'll show you that one in a second. And this LOD piece position is new to uh, an upcoming version of Trains. Uh, it tells you what it does here. It's basically going to um, help end caps. So for, for uh, end caps on your splines, just like terminators um, and initiators were back in the day. So 
So hopefully we'll get to that um, when the new build comes out. But uh, don't worry about that one for now. More information as it comes will be placed on the wiki also when the, when the train comes out. The next version. Okay, so now let's get on to LOD Season Index. And if we jump to the other file, it's a river spline. And what we're doing is in our mesh table, we're declaring uh, only one uh, IM, .im file in terms of LOD because it's, uh, if we have a look at it in here, it is in fact uh, two triangles, so one poly and one draw call. So we don't really need anything less than that. Okay, so that's going to be our spline. And in here, we have uh, lod0.im, which is going to be for season zero, which we're saying is summer. You can make whatever numbers you want. Uh, sorry, you'll need to stick to zero to four, but this one here is uh, summer. Track lod0w is for winter. So mesh season one is, uh, what is the next mesh we're using, which is a winter mesh. And then track LOD 0S we're using for snow, which is we've made mesh season three, which is above the snow line. Okay. So those three have been declared in what seasons they're going to use each of those meshes. And now we'll jump into our track container and we're saying uh, the mesh length is 40. So these files here are 40 meters long. All right. And what we're doing now is we're going track LOD tree LOD distance of 1,500 meters. If it's that or before, use our high detail. If it's that or after, use our low. And what we've done is we've left it blank. And you can do this at any time you want. And this just means it won't render anything. So it's a good way to turn off your splines, you know, at two kilometers, maybe three kilometers, you're not going to see them very well. So there's no need to be rendering them again. Save a bit of performance, just turn them off. So you can do this, you can make it empty uh, at any section of the tree you like. We, we're making it render nothing at 1,500 meters. So at 1,500 meters after, sorry. So at 1,500 meters before, we're going high detail and we're saying the LOD season index is one. And before I go and explain the seasons and their numbers, let me just jump down to something you need to add in all your assets if you want seasonal support, is the season selector container. The season selector container is made up of uh, a bunch of true and falses uh, that allow you to specify what output season number you're going to use. So I've just simply started off with above the snow line is one, which is if the branch is true, the output season will be three. And remember up here, we had track LOD 0S for snow was the mesh season three. So that one's going to be used above the snow line as stated here. So above the snow line one, branch equals true, output season three. If branch equals false, which means we're below the snow line, uh, we will go seasonal range 0 0.25 to 0 0.7 uh, which should indicate uh, winter, I think. Uh, it's explained on the trains uh, wiki. If you just type in seasonal selected, it'll explain what these values can do for you. Uh, it's to do with quarters in the calendar year. So I'm pretty sure that's winter. Uh, I could be wrong, but if we're just going to uh, mean it's winter for now, and it jumps in here and goes branch is true, then it does another seasonal check and it goes if uh, whatever section is there. Actually, it looks like it's taking a few different um, seasons into account there. So it's saying whatever season this is, it's going to go branch is equal true, then the output is equal to zero, which um, in this case is summer. But if this is not true, then we're going to treat it as winter, which will be one. And again, if this wasn't true, then the branch equals false and we're going to treat it as summer. So whatever these actual mean, uh, the wiki will tell you how to analyze those, um, but they're to determine a certain range or a certain set of months within the year. 
Okay, and then you're just going true and false on these to select what uh, number you're going to give each season uh, to support your assets above. So given that uh, I probably have confused a few of you, jump on season selector, have a look at how it works, uh, and then you're going to determine what your output numbers are based on these seasonal ranges. And in this particular example, I've done season, uh, the number zero is summer, the number one is winter, and the number three is above the snow line. Okay, so when we go back up to our track lod tree, you're going to see that um, at 1500 meters or before, I'm lod, uh, saying the lod seasonal index is winter, and if, if this is true in the game, the high detail lod will be used. If it's not true, then the low detail lod will be used, which is track lod zero. So that's saying if uh, winter is turned on, use this. If, winter's, if winter isn't present in the game, use this. So it's using our summer lod, okay, which is the one up here. Then we go into, uh, if it is winter, drops into the high detail lod, and we do another analysis and a split between it. And it says, okay, well, if it is winter, uh, then the lod seasonal index is uh, three, and between this, what uh, we can determine is if it is above the snow line, we use track lod zero S, which is telling us to use that one. Then if it's not, it's obviously just winter and use the winter one, which is this one. So you're just analyzing at each point in determining uh, which seasonal tree to follow based on what the game has used um, or is, has set in uh, Surveyor. So I hope that uh, you can also use this to determine your uh, random bias. It'll work the same way, obviously uh, not anything to do with seasonal selector, but You'll be you'll be putting in um, random bias and going high or low, and then continuing on to to show which mesh you want to display. So if we jump back into the game, load up our our example. Um, I might see if I can show it a little bit better. Mm, I can't really. It all blends together. Okay. So what you can see there is that's the summer season. Now if you go to season one, which was winter, it should change. Yep, that's our winter. And because it's 40 meters, it's actually squished it right down on this preview. Uh, it's meant to be a nice big 40 meter spline stretched out, but that's what you end up getting uh, if you don't stick to 40 meters. So you might want to make it a bit less than 40, uh, or put sub subdivisions in your lods, like we do with, did with the track. Uh, and then you can test uh, season three or whatever. So hopefully that will um, help you out with your seasonal assets as well. And what we'll do is uh, these assets that we've had in this tutorial, we'll put them up on the uh, download station so you can grab them, you can check them out, you can alter them however you wish and put your own uh, meshes and, and uh, examples and assets into trains using those examples hopefully. Uh, if you'd like any more information on track lod tree, uh, just leave some comments uh, in the Trains Twitch TV uh, forum and uh, we'll get back to you. Excellent. Thanks for watching.